Hello, hello. I need to just make sure I can get Anne. Just turn my volume up. There she is. Hi. Hello. Hello. You can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. The fact that I've actually managed to <laughs> achieve this. Goal number one, ticked off. I mean, make it easy. Come on. <laughs> We've started. We've started. Uh, Hello, everyone. Hey. Well, welcome to my and Anne's live. Um, we were talking this morning. Well, we've been talking for a couple of weeks. We're basically the same person. And we... <laughs> we are going to start something really exciting which we've both alluded to in our stories today and it was Anne's idea so what what go on you share it well I just so after we did that first podcast I came off it like absolutely buzzing um and I just it's so funny isn't it? when you if you meet so like we've never met in the flesh and the fact that like when you start talking to someone and you're like, oh my God, this this is like, this is my jam. This is my kind of person. Have you ever seen those memes when they're going about when you meet another adult and you're just like, yeah, I like you. Yeah, yeah, let, let's be friends. And um, and it was that, I was just like, oh, this could be so good. And then, um, so I was just like, I was chatting to our mentor and you know, about how good it'd be. Uh, to do a podcast together and um and i think the idea of doing it like that once a month and we can check in with each other see how we're doing and actually this now sounds like it's going to be even better because of our the goals and the similar goals that we've got over yeah. the next kind of couple of months um and then uh, i mean the name is just um do we tell people now or do we wait till we yeah. launch it um I, I it has to be called bossing menopause and i just think that you know neither you or i think uh, sat here saying that we get it right every single day or i mean i have absolutely screwed up big time recently um but i think what that's the really good thing is we can share this and like you said it just feels like we're just the we seem to be the same person slightly which is yeah. a bit strange <laughs> but also really cool yeah and then yesterday i posted that i'm gonna start an eight week fat loss phase for myself today and you said you messaged me and said oh so am i i know we should book, honestly, we should talk about this yeah no i know and like and the coinc it was just such it proper quinky dink yeah and then we just decided to add even more complexity to the situation and we decided that why not do our first episode as an instagram live yeah i mean why not like because we, we're like complete experts at constant instagram lives and <laughs> I mean, we, you just got to do it. And like the number, how many times do you say it to clients as well? Just, yeah. Just okay. Do it. Now, what's the worst that can happen? What, you get it wrong and learn from it? Okay, let's crack on. Exactly. Um, but so I'm excited about We're embodying things. imperfect action today, everyone. This might not be 100%, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, so welcome. Welcome to episode one of Bossing the Menopause. Yay. Oh, that's yeah. like I'm, <laughs> it's the name. I love the name. Yeah, exactly. Because everyone, every, everyone bloody should boss it. There's too yeah. much going around of like, you know, making it feel like it's the end of the world, you know. And actually, like, you can feel fucking ace doing it. So, you know. Anyway, that's yeah, yeah absolutely top. Yeah. So, what's the, like? What's made you kind of make that decision of like, right? this is it, um, I, I really want to, you know, go into a little bit of fat loss phase. Well, I, hmm, I guess the first thing I thought was, I've been practicing the last few months not tracking my food. 
And I've not massively shared this. I think I shared it with you, but I've not massively, massively shared this in, in my community that that was something I was quite fearful of stepping away from, which is crazy because I help my clients step away from it, but it's always a bit harder to do yourself. Um, but uh, one of the things that I can definitely feel is that I had let a few things get a bit fluffy and a bit you know a bit more chocolate here and a little maybe another slice of bread with that um and actually i realized i'm talking about my programs and about my clients going into christmas feeling amazing but also approaching christmas with that really balanced mentality so i thought right i'm doing it as well yeah. You know, there's no, there's no big stretch of, right, it must be this many calorie uh, k kilograms or this number on a scale. It's just, right, let's, for eight weeks, tighten things up a little bit, really. Yeah. What about you? And that's kind of, it's, it's good to have that, that moderated approach as well. And it's quite a... It is quite a difficult mindset, though. If you're, it depends on you know what your experiences have been over. Life. I mean, I have made some monumental mistakes over the years when it comes to fat loss. Like, I, it took me an entire day yesterday to record a podcast about that because I realized I started recording it, and then I realized I was unpacking things from years ago that I'd really? probably put away and not really thought about in much detail because. Mm -hmm. I've now got myself to a place where I have, you know, really got a, a, such a better relationship with food and the, you know, the, the whole, my whole ethos and approach around food and fat loss is so different to the way that it used to be. Yeah. And this is, this is where, this is pre coaching. And, and it's, it's kind of now I realized yesterday, um, I'd already decided that I was going to, you know, like, like you said, like, I think it's about how you feel, isn't mm. it? When you feel that, and if you feel that that's right for you to make that decision to go, you know, to want to lose, a, a, to go into a fat loss phase, then that's right for you. Mm. And, and I always focus on that is how I feel now. I, I, it's, yes, I mean, who doesn't want to look good naked and, you know, like, so we're not doing that on this on the live no. um, <laughs> boom all the followers <laughs> all the, the wrong followers yeah, no, no. completely that's a lot. but it's i think you know we are wrapped up in a in an industry that we can be quite highly criticized for um talking about fat loss but for me it's actually what it means to you and how you feel and if that's your goal that's your goal and you, yeah. you own it yeah. and and that at the moment for me is but I really really had to wind my neck in yesterday in terms of my um what what I thought that I felt and, and then I started unpacking it all from years ago and I was like actually yeah. This is, you know, this is a bit ridiculous, Anne. Because I used to wear 17 and a half stone and be like size 24. I was smoking like a chimney. I was so unhealthy, it is untrue. Mm. And I'm like, and and in my mind, I got myself over the last couple of weeks to a place where I was like, oh, God, I feel like I did when I was 28. Yeah. Like that. And I was like, wait a minute. And then yesterday, I did it. I rarely, rarely step on the scales. And yesterday I did, and what was quite interesting was it was actually really helpful. And it for, for me yesterday it was helpful because it helped me kind of go, wait a minute, if 28-year-old unhealthy, you know, 17 and a half stone me looked at that, and I'm 14 and a half stone now, and if I looked at that and someone said, oh, by the way, would you like to, um, you know, would you like to be three stone lighter? bloody hell i just snapped your hand off and here's me sitting here well not now because i've worked i've worked through it but sitting there you know yesterday thinking oh god this is ridiculous i've got you know i haven't got any jeans that fit me and da, 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 and you know and, it, and I, I spiraled and what yeah. was really really interesting was sitting back 
doing a bit of work on myself and and then you know having those light bulb moments that you know that would be a coaching conversation wouldn't it that you take somebody through yeah yeah and and now you're saying it i feel like i probably had similar when i was thinking about it but also for me there's something about because if i think my my comparison pictures you know i've got pictures from when i was late teens early 20s where i am you know and i'm a short ass and so where i'm a lot bigger but actually if i think about me just around the time of my wedding i weigh the same now as i did on my wedding day but i'm two dress sizes smaller if i tried to put my wedding dress on it would just fall off but there's something so there's that there's that piece to it you know I'm, I'm really happy with where i am and i'm really happy with what i do and how i um train and how i eat but i think this time of year can go so over the top yeah totally and, and because i don't work in a corporate job anymore i don't have the millions of socials that i used to have you know it was it was often one one thing going on with work every week from about the middle of november and then you had all your friends and your family stuff so i don't have that anymore christmas party for one um <laughs> well do a Christmas party live. Yeah. Bossing the menopause party. <laughs> yeah. But um, it can just get over the top. And I don't enjoy eating and drinking like that. I don't enjoy it. I actually prefer to get to Christmas Eve and go, you know what? I've got three days where I can go hard now and then I can just return to normal. And that's what I enjoy. But it can be, it can get so over the top now in the in these next two months can just be crazy. And so that was the other thing, you know, that I thought, this gives me structure. Yeah. It gives me structure for the next two months. And lo and behold, last minute invitation out for dinner tonight. But that's fine. You adapt. And I guess that's why we do what we do, because we teach people how to adapt. And so we know how to adapt. But yeah. yeah. And that's and that's so true. Like I've I've got similar things this week. I've got to I've I have to take my daughter to um to a rehearsal that is um miles away from here. So I can't come back. And so therefore I do have to eat out and, and you know, and but like you say, when you have the tools to do that, you, you feel completely confident and happy about the choices that you're going to make. Mm. But how many people do we see and talk to that that becomes an overwhelming decision to make and then the non-action is actually the action in yeah. a sense. And yeah. I, I, I love those really, I love the little light bulb moments with people and with clients where you will give them just one little strategy um, something so simple as right you're going out to eat have you looked online at the menu and made your choice and it, you know the number of people I say that's when that's a, a you know a, oh god I've not thought about doing that yeah. and that is so empowering having a really little strategy like that becomes really empowering yeah. and another yeah. one, I, I spoke to a client the other day and another one was um I said to her do you order first and she went what do you mean I went, you know, when they come around the table, you know, and she's like, oh, no, like all my family orders are, you know, my, you know, yeah. kids do. Da, da, da. And I'm like, by which point you've had a good think about, you know, all the, you know, all the food envy that you'll have or all the yeah. choices that people are making. Yeah. And I was like, order first, get it out, done, boom, written down. Yeah. Um, and it's, it I think, you know, like you said, to be able to approach these things and enjoy them and it's it, that that gives me the warm and fuzzies like being able to actually help people enjoy these you know be it a celebration or and and enjoy their food and at the same time be working towards the goals that they're working towards yeah for sure. um, so you uh, so goals goals what's your goals in, in, my, in my 
broadest Yorkshire accent ever. Go on. So, like I said, there's no there's no hardcore number on the scale. Um, I've got a pair of jeans that are a little bit too tight at the minute, so I'd quite like to be able to, for them to be comfortable to wear the whole day. Um, not undo the not miss out there. Well, I think it's fair enough on Christmas Day to undo your top button. No. no. Christmas Day is like you are, you've got to get some of those Joey and yeah. the, uh, Phoebe yeah. pants yeah. on Christmas Day. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not yeah. putting them away. Yeah. yeah. But if if I talk about feeling, I want to get to Christmas Eve and I want to think, like I said before, right, I'm I'm good to go now for the next three days. And by the time I've had three days of it all, I can't wait to get back to normal routine anyway. Yeah. I've had it up by then. So it's, for me, there's this piece around really feeling like I can just enjoy those few days over Christmas and not have to worry about it and just be yes yes i'll have that glass of champagne at 10 a.m thank you um but there's also i think there's also a little bit of when was the last time i truly truly dieted about four years ago i've just kind of hopped along and maintained really a little bit what yeah but do you not think that that comes out of um but it's part of it's part of your lifestyle yeah. now and eating yeah. you know eat, eating well and eat, cho making choices that are right for you and your body and your lifestyle it just becomes all part of you know your your everyday life yeah. and i've i've been the same in terms of um over the over the i, I kind of say over the years in terms of the last 10 years since i started coaching crossfit i was um i i have the only reason that really my weight and my body composition has fluctuated over those years is because sometimes i might be um really really hitting it hard training and um i might have a competition coming up or don't get excited people i ain't like some mega athlete but i love i do love competing i love that feeling um and so that's kind of been a complete byproduct of me doing the things that I really, really enjoy mm. and being able to, you know, fuel my body to be able to do mega lifts or, you know, yeah, like go to a, a competition. It's, and I've just not really, like you say, I haven't, I, I mean, I don't even use the word diet, I have to say. I actually don't. And, and, and it's what's going to be really, really interesting for us having these conversations are the differences, I think, mm. in some of our coaching language and approaches as well yeah. and and i've yeah i i probably other other people will use that word with me but i've, I've and again that probably goes way back to when i was younger as well um but it's going to be interesting for me in a sense because i've now got i'm now at this point where i'm like right i i know that i definitely want to lose some way but i still feel that i am wanting to keep focused on the feeling and how ace the training feels and how it feels to eat you know really really good meals mm. okay right so i was i was talking to someone uh, today about it and they were like mate you don't eat that and i'm like yeah i know i know but i'm i think i do need to just look at it holistically mm. And not just think that, you know, doing having one. Uh, well, we were talking about HRT, and I'm like, the thought of, you know, there's so many that be like, right, wacky patch, and oh, that's it, great, I'm spotted, that's it, perimenopause, boss. <laughs> and it's just not that way. You've got to take care of everything else. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the other thing. Actually, you've just made me think. I've. I've, you know, just really tweaking things to also make me feel better in terms of some of the symptoms. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. What are your goals then? Do you have a hard number 
No, not not in the slightest. I think the thing is, um, and I will, well, I'll share a picture and uh, show you as well, but when I was at my leanest, as in you could look at me and you would be like, fuck, you're like, you know, ripped. God, you must be feeling great. I was mentally not well at all. It would, it just, and I think that is one of the things is that I, I know I was my leanest and I was my, I was about probably knocking two stone lighter than I am now. Mm. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to put a number on it. For me, this is, the goal is to feel on more days than I don't, to feel energized, to want to be in that gym and to, to really be the, um, you know, the role model as well to not only my clients, to my kids and, you know, and, and again, at Christmas, you know, you were sitting talking about Christmas. Mm. I, I was just thinking to myself, then I'm like, actually, the, it isn't really that many Christmas. I can't think of a Christmas when it, it's gone completely completely and utterly you know that i haven't been focused on things that i want to uh, want to continue achieving and my you know my lifestyle yeah. over christmas yeah. um i there was a christmas it completely and utterly went tits up for me where i thought to myself wait a minute that's that's not a good thing was when like and i realized that cheese i i like cheese don't get me wrong i'm not a cheese basher but it does not like me one little bit <laughs> and i remember and it was like this complete like <laughs> this day of like i'm that's it i'm i'm out me and cheese are out oh, no. and uh so uh so yeah there's a girl i won't be having cheese no cheese for you yeah no, no cheese but i'm the same and like you know i want to i at the moment put on certain certain clothes I, that i have in the past and i'm like yeah, but I love these clothes and I know it'd be great to go out, you know, I could go out and go buy some others and etc. But um I quite fancy being able to put those on again and I think that that will feel good, but I'm not fixated on that. I'm fixated on I just I just want to feel really good on a regular basis mm. and, and I know if you do all if you if you're checking kind of all those basics you can it's and so what um what are your non-negotiables then so my non-negotiables are a realistic calorie deficit that i can stick to um i will track my food at least for the first couple of weeks but then i probably won't because i don't know about you but i tend to eat the same things all the time um it might go to tracking my food just when there's an event or something i don't know i'll play about with it um 100 grams of protein at least per day minimum uh 10k steps a day uh four strength workouts a week uh which I, I normally do more than that so that should be fine uh and then m focusing on my sleep because this is that's my big weakness when it comes to perimenopause is my sleep is it so yeah and i can go i can go the whole week on five hours sleep a night whoa yeah whoa. how do you find that impacts on you <laughs> you know how i couldn't talk when i was voice noting you earlier that's I've really that. <laughs> <laughs> um it, yeah i normally get to this time of the day and i just want to nap and I just want to eat and it doesn't it doesn't really affect my activity I've got a dog that needs walking I enjoy lifting but it's more my food choices they'll just be a little bit more this or a little bit more that just to get me through and also I can then become really over-reliant on caffeine do you do you find um this might just be me but having the knowledge sometimes can be a little bit dangerous like well, not dangerous but i mean sorry that's totally the wrong word but like as it right i'll give you an example right when i've had shit sleep it's almost i then become some caricature of what you're supposed to be when you've had shit sleep oh mm. well it, oh well uh yeah well i will start craving carb more carbs when i've had shit sleep oh i better have this massive wedge of sourdough yeah. and, and then i'm like 
Do you stop being a dick about this, Anne? Wearable devices for your sleep are no good. I don't care how much Whoop bang on about their their great sleep tracking. When I had a Whoop band, I was the most neurotic about my sleep I've ever been. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean the knowledge is fantastic in the in the majority, but it's, it is sometimes when you're like, right, and I I can't validate myself with these with this knowledge in a sense yeah. and it's uh so have you do you take any do you like take magnesium anything yeah. like that to, to so try I, take, and I take zma before bed about an hour before bed and i have quite a strong bedtime routine so um i i've actually been doing something really interesting for the last two weeks so i'll go up to my room Normally, I've got my pajamas off already. Let's not let's not even oh, kid each other. Off when you walk through the door, yeah. surely. <laughs> um, I'm surprised I even get dressed for work. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at about nine, I'll you know get myself ready for bed. Take my ZOA. I'll brush my teeth so that I can't eat anything else. Um, I don't drink any hot drinks after about 7 p.m. Otherwise, I will need to wee at about 2 a.m. Um, and then I journal and I read and then I listen to bedtime meditation. And the experiment I've been running the last two weeks is don't set an alarm unless you have a train or plane or automobile to, or automobile to catch. And on the whole, idea kick in. Yeah. On the on the whole, I am getting better sleep from not setting an alarm, but I'm not waking up hugely late for my day. I'm still up between before my husband and my son. Like the latest I've woken up is six thirty. That's interesting. So what? So is it your uh, you getting to sleep or staying, your quality staying asleep? Staying asleep? Mm. Have you tried anything like a, a protein snack? At yeah, I always have protein before bed. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's it, it's quite it is one of those that comes up on a regular basis. This is the sleep is the sleep side of things. Mm. And so I'm not necessarily um, if in fact I'll be full disclosure. If I've done if I haven't had a drink, usually my sleep's are pretty much okay mm -hmm. it's getting to sleep maybe not so great but when i have the routine and um that's that's probably okay mm -hmm. i think my my worst my worst symptoms are uh it's not necessarily a symptom it's like the cocktail of them mm -hmm. and i i find that i all i kind of have this analogy of like them just li just getting chucked into a pot mm -hmm. and it gets the point where if I don't look after myself enough, then like this pot's filling up and it just gets to this this breaking point. And I, and I think I have ignored that over the last couple of weeks, which is one of the reasons for just dialing in things mm. for myself now. And I think, you know, your non-negotiables there are, are just so similar to ones that, you know, I would say for um, not only clients, but myself as well. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's just choosing it's things isn't it that are basic that you can fit in quite simply with your with your lifestyle at the moment and um i'm not actually tracking because i tend to it, it it tends to either go way way um over the top extreme with me or that in like three days time i hit the fuck it button and there was there'd be absolutely zero reason to, but I'll suddenly work track a meal or something like that. Whereas actually, that's ridiculous. And um, I fight, and over the years, so I, God, I bet it'd be quite a good six or seven years ago, I spent, it, it'll have been about three, four months, I think, really, really tracking, uh, focusing on my body composition for training and performance and um, but as a result of that that taught me so much about eyeballing food and I know that like a, you know a cup of basmati a cup of cooked basmati rice is about 205 calories and it's like right I know that I'm 
you know, and you get to the point where you can kind of eyeball, don't you? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's where I, where I will be. Maybe there's a little bit of trusting myself. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is, and you've got to call yourself out. Yeah. And you really do. And you, um, and that's the, that's the other thing with tracking is, is the number of times, you know, I, I'll, I will ask quite a brutally honest question of clients and just say, you know, how honest is this? Mm -hmm. Am I looking at the app? you know what you you say is the absolutely correct oh no well actually i was at a party on you know yeah. saturday night and da, da, da. right okay so and it's not about calling people out and you know hitting them over the, the head with a stick it's about well you know what do you you know what are we going to do to make sure that this helps you move forward mm -hmm. rather than you know it, it can be quite psychologically you know it depends on people, you know, it can be quite psychologically battering to constantly be tracking. Yeah. I think, uh, when do you track? Do you track after or before? I pre track oh, like every time, pre track, yeah. yeah, yeah. I pre track every, I mainly do it on a Sunday when I'm planning my week, yeah. so I roughly know what I'm having for the whole week. My breakfast is the same every day. I miss, I feel sorry for my breakfast if I don't have that breakfast every day. I'm so pathetic. <laughs> What's your go-to breakfast? What is it? Yogurt, berries, and then the Aldi protein granola, like a little scoop of that on top. Oh, amazing. <gasps> yeah. I have, um, I have that. So I have, what, you know, those protein, have you ever got Aldi protein yogurts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I'll have that with um, uh, berries and a, a little bit of granola like it's, and it's so nice so filling and it actually isn't you know you're not breaking the the color band with it at all and that's the thing isn't it you know when you start having these conversations about calories and choices and things like that you can you can be bloody miserable on uh, 1800 2000 calorie diet or you can eat a shitload on it yeah. and that is you know that, that for a lot of people is where it's at is having those what's your what's your favorite uh favorite veg and stuff to oh pile on your plate courgette oh i saw that um, and but not mushroom no <laughs> they are the devil's food oh i'm aware they are not they're disgusting i was dev i'm devastated i don't have any in today like i'm mushroom disgusting uh courgette and broccoli i love i'm really into leeks at the moment oh. Ooh. Ooh. made a fish pie last night with leeks oh uh, yeah have you do do you how do you do the pie do you do it with the phyllo phyllo pastry potato oh. do potato on my pie um and i'm gonna send um i'm gonna send the recipe out tomorrow actually but I just shove loads and loads of veg in the filling because then like, I, I go with the whole ad don't take away. Yeah. Fish pie, is, fish pie is delicious, but you do need cheese on it to make it taste good. Maybe not in your case because cheese doesn't like oh, you. Maybe. You do need a white sauce. You, you know, you do need, if you're going to have pastry or you're going to have potato, it needs to be, you know, creamy, flaky. It needs to be good. Okay, so just add a load of veg to that fish pie, and it's brilliant. You can still enjoy the fish pie. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, we shouldn't have done this when I'm like hungry. I did actually, I, I did actually have a little snackage before. Um, I'm loving it. Like, <laughs> I don't know why I'm totally digressing because we're talking about food, but I have, um, I really like hummus, mm. but mm. I know when I'm not being. Uh, um when you know you're saying about uh calling yourself out when we say calling ourselves out is when i dip hummus instead of spreading it <laughs> that's when i'm <laughs> hold on hold on you don't dip it i haven't even got anything here i can use you scoop yeah it. Yeah, yeah 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 you're like teaspoon it's easier teaspoon <laughs> i love it when, so one of my clients once when i was saying about um so having uh 
fat, uh, so having basically all the macros in a snack as well. And it was like, she was like, oh, I absolutely love apples. I'm like, right, have it with a bit of peanut butter and, you know, and then, or even like with it, things like baby bells and stuff like that. And, uh, and, she, and then she messaged, I remember this photo, I've probably still got it. And she's like, are you actually kidding me how much peanut butter is not a, not an appropriate portion? And I'm like, yeah, sorry about that. Maybe go with the baby bell. And, uh, but like the size of the peanut butter is like about this, isn't it? Versus what you can yeah, have. I've got a hack for that. Oh, come on. So you thin the peanut butter down with a bit of water and then you slice up the apple because everyone knows that an apple tastes better sliced up. Oh, hell yeah. Although Maureen might disagree because she loves an apple directly from the fridge, doesn't she? And crunches it. But yeah. And put it on your plate, thin the peanut butter down with a bit of water and then you drizzle the peanut butter on the apple oh, slices. Holy shit. Mind blown. And then every yes. piece gets a bit of peanut butter. Oh, right. Now, when we're talking about hacks, um, the, this is turning into some sort of food channel. <laughs> but, um, right, I have, um, well, I say I, so I got a recipe off uh, a guy that I used to work with for healthy kebabs. Mm. Um, and it is one of the best things ever and tastes ridiculously authentic. It's like you use like mega lean lamb mince, but mix it with lean turkey mince and you like you cook it like a slab of meat oh, wow. and then and then you slice it up and you have it with you know like either tortillas or you know greek greek wraps or whatever it might be but with lettuce whatever veg really you want but i have it with like lettuce onion tomatoes but it's the garlic sauce that is the best hack i have ever ever used with things is so you get cottage cheese with chives in and put it, yeah, I know you're pulling that face already. Stick with me. So cottage cheese and chives, you put it in a blender, all a generic blender, doesn't have to be a neutral bullet. <laughs> uh, you put it in there with a little bit of water and um, basically garlic to your taste, but like a teaspoon of some puree garlic, whiz it all up. You like, honestly, it's wow. better than the shit that you get at the kebab shop oh, and like and drizzle that on. I, uh, I think we need to in when we put this on as the podcast is in the podcast notes put the put some of the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, but actually, hold on. We say we've digressed. There's something here I think that is really relevant to bossing the menopause and fat loss. Right? How often? do we get bored of the same boring meals but also cooking yeah me and you talked about two food things and got really excited about them and that's is that's so thing. true and how many people do you how many of your clients are either like you said they're either bored or the one that i get on such a regular basis is um but I don't want to have to cook something else to my family and uh, and like, oh God, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to cook diet food. I'm like, no, you're not. And you're never gonna hear that phrase from me. No. And every single, if I ever do, so I did a post about um, the times that meal plans could work and, and what's, and the thing that I absolutely love is, and I think for all us lot and coaches in, in this space is that or the ones that really do it you know have the their clients at heart is that we all have different approaches and that's the beauty of it is that you know you, the our clients work with us because they want to work with us and what i was what i found absolutely ace was like you know you as a coach might not do meal plans and there are absolutely the right principles behind that Whereas then I was like saying, oh, I actually do meal plans for some of my some of my clients. I've even gone to the extent for some of them for a few weeks where I have been putting in their gusto orders for them. <laughs> and I, I, that does that that was extreme, but it was getting them to the point of understanding what their day's food looked like and how they could do it for their whole family. Oh, yeah. And I think the I think for the kind of 
the kind of people we probably work with, you know, uh, busy, busy family people, uh, uh, parents and, you know, and all this is that they need to know that what they're doing is moving them towards their goals, but also it's not another job. And, yeah. and that's the thing is like all these, all these meals that we were just going on about, they, they're all things that are like, I absolutely categorically know that, all, that my clients that have had them, they turn around and they're like, oh my God, like my son absolutely loves that. Barely left me any. And, you know, and it's like, and I love that. I love it when I get that kind of feedback. Exactly. Exactly. Um, were, did you have any non-negotiables that were different to mine? Anything you um, thinking So, pro, so I'm approaching it in a way where I am um, making sure that I, I build every meal around my protein. I'm not... Um, again like i was saying because of eyeballing i'm i'm not tracking it to the nth degree in terms of you know the grams and my yeah my steps my steps are just naturally happening anyway because i've got the dog but i do want to make sure that on average over the week it's well in excess of seventy eight thousand over the week so you know that ten thousand which is such an arbitrary figure isn't it but it just means that you get that you know extra, extra bit of moving in and some days that is the only movement that I do as well. So it mm. has to be a non-negotiable yeah. for me that. And it isn't about it being necessarily non-negotiable because I'm wanting, I'm on a fat loss phase. It's non-negotiable because it helps this, it helps my head. Um, and then the, the biggest change for me and the biggest non-negotiable is going to be doing three strength workouts a week. It's completely dropped off. I've been focusing on my rehab on my knee and that's been pretty sporadic uh, at best. So my consistency in terms of training has been off, and that has that is probably going to be my biggest challenge in terms of non-negotiables. Yeah. Um, and you know, just it's going back to basics. It's absolutely going back to basics. Yeah. Not what do you complicated. Like, say that again. Sorry. Not making it complicated. No, no, absolutely not. And because the minute you do is the minute that, you know, you for, you do what? Mon Monday and Tuesday are generally pretty good. Wednesday and then into Wednesday evening, you're like, oh, oh God, I've got to think about the weekend. Da -da, oh, fuck it. Like, and you, it just, it is, doesn't have to be that way. This is about life and about a healthy, sustainable approach to life, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Have you got any challenges coming up then that you can, that you think, uh, you know, that you're gonna to have to plan for? Yes, so I don't wanna say this because you can't come, but Glasgow this week. Oh no, it's okay. I've got something equally as, I've like literally had two, there were two things and I'd already booked on the other thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, well I said the other thing, like I'm not saying what it's, uh, I'm uh, going to Women Making Change, <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. weekend so there'll be loads of um basically loads of fitness um uh people from the fitness space but uh probably in the majority crossfit space as well so i'm so excited but yeah yeah Glasgow, Glasgow, so, do you not think that'll be a really kind of an opportunity though actually to be focused and you know it's more the traveling oh, more right, the yeah. sitting on a train Train for five hours, getting up. I mean, I'm, I won't be getting up any earlier than I normally do, but train boredom. So for me, that's take some breakfast with me so I don't have to buy anything at the station um, and take some breakfast for Saturday morning and Sunday morning as well because I, I haven't bothered with hotel breakfast. Um, and then, yeah, it's. I don't think... I don't, I'm not going to be drinking. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to be like that. So yeah. it's more just getting the movement in on the Friday and the Sunday because it's so much train time. Yeah. Um, and then the weekend after, I'm out with my husband and his brother and sister and their partners for like a bit of a boozy Saturday evening. But again, it's one night. Yeah. It's yeah, I know exactly, and it's it's about enjoying it. And yeah, and. And that that's actually a controllable, isn't it, as well? Yeah. It, you know, and it's when those things come along, um, you know, when you're having conversations with clients about almost you, 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 giving them that kind of just 
breathe out it's controllable and enjoy it and yeah and that you know you can't you, you can't not do things yeah. you know you've got to live your life and yeah the that long-term sustainable approach is we're healthier yeah. and yeah. like i said you know oh i've got a fun question to ask you Go on. what's what's the uh what's the either the worst or the most the just the worst way that you have dieted or lost weight in the past uh, uh i did like juicing i bought myself a phillips juicer uh i mean i say you say lost weight i didn't lose anything on that i lasted two days because of <laughs> a headache um so that was the most that was the most you know ridiculous fad um but in my mid-20s and this is horrific but i abused laxatives uh, i was just gonna say i was gonna say like i i call it it's either you know it's worst what is it worst at best and dangerous at worst yeah and, and i think that yeah i did that and i i wrecked my yeah. stomach i absolutely yeah. wrecked my stomach and i've only just at 43 got my stomach into a position now where my digestive system works properly wow. but you know, it only um, people do it and they say, oh, yeah, you know, that's just going to take a load of laxatives and then I'll just, you know, it won't matter what I've eaten. It's not the fact that you're taking the laxatives and the food's going through you that is making you lose weight. I re realise now, looking back, I was on the loose so much every morning because I would take one every night. I couldn't eat until lunchtime. It's and so dangerous. yeah it's and so, so dangerous so and this is the thing is like this is what pisses me off about um the you know people that aren't the non-qualified you know influencers and stuff like that that it, that are influencing and it's so fucking dangerous mm -hmm. and that and it and that worries me massively and you know i'm not i'm not sat here having not done half of that shit over the years and i i've i've learned and this and i'll always say i've learned masses from the mistakes that i've made i've you know i've done the, the shake diet the you know the laxatives at worst that that was a really low point for me yeah. all i i was in my uh, i was sing, single in my kind of like mid to late 20s and I was fixated on being able to socialize on a weekend and kind of, you know, go out. So it was like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'd be going out and I'd like, well, if I'm going to do that, how the fuck am I going to keep my weight off? And, and I was so, so focused on that. It's got nothing to do with my health, nothing to do with, you know, the way my body moves and what it can actually do. And, and I think that is, you know, that's one of my massive, well, and you're the same massive passions is making sure that people just, if if you have a goal and you do and we're talking about fat loss if you have a goal of fat loss that you get the right advice and that you're not extreme in your approach and you will you will achieve what you want to achieve and unfortunately there there isn't an overnight you know no it, you can't just push a button and it happen overnight doing this should improve and enhance your life yeah not the end. I wrote a post about this the other day. If what you're doing is not is making you feel worse rather than better, you're doing something wrong. You know, yeah. the laxative is a form of self harm. It was a form yeah. of self harm. I know, yeah. And, and and I think that's the I well, I guess in a sense we should put a little bit of a trigger on at the beginning of this when we part when we post it as the part as the podcast. Um that 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 is one of one of the things is that you know for me it's to i think it's taken it really did take me up until i would say five or six years ago to actually feel like i didn't have a destructive or very poor relationship with food mm -hmm. um and and i can it's what's good now is i can identify triggers or you know things that 
uh, creep back in that I think, mm, wait a minute, I know this. I don't have to be extreme in my approach. I can sit back and it's giving yourself space and time to to think, you know, right, what what can I do? What can I control? And um, yeah, and, and I think also speaking to people about stuff as well. For sure. And I think I think that's why, you know, I know we're calling this bossing the menopause and people might now be listening to this part and thinking, well, you've not actually mentioned menopause very much. Please remember, we are two perimenopausal women. So so that is part of our consideration. But also it doesn't matter. And we talked about this on our podcast before everyone experiences perimenopause differently the thing is if you are experiencing even one symptom that is causing you discomfort or distress or it is impacting in your your life in any way as far as i'm concerned you will want to be doing as much other things to make your life better as possible yeah and that exactly what we're talking about now is we both have a way we want to feel when we get to christmas we both have a way we want to approach christmas we need to consider our symptoms and what and the other things that happen to us and our lifestyle but the point of this is the actions and the non-negotiables we're taking we're doing them in conjunction with the treatment we personally are on for our perimenopause symptoms and knowing what our energy and our moods are like and we're doing it to enhance our lives not make it worse yeah 100 percent. well could not have said it better i think it, that's absolutely true and the fact that actually everything that you want to achieve doesn't have to stop just because you hit perimenopause and yeah. and i've been guilty of that well and truly over the last year of of really using menopause as a as an excuse yes completely and utterly oh it's the menopause oh i don't need to do that and and also then with with the weight gain of um I d <laughs> i'm a bloody menopause coach and yet i can turn around and say to myself use it as a as an excuse which is bullshit and it's looking at it like you say like you know enhancing our lives with our approach our holistic approach to all this and making sure that what we do is moving us forwards to what however we want to live our yeah. lives yeah. I, I spoke, spoke to someone to, in fact i put a video on straight away i spoke to a client today and she's very, she's very similar to me in a sense that she wants to continue training in the way that she's trained and um you know why why the fuck should um menopause actually stop you from doing stuff it's like i don't want it to stop me from lifting weights above you know shitloads of weight above my head and going and crushing a workout but i just have to approach it in a slightly different way because of the melting pot of those symptoms and it'd be really good actually for us to like talk about maybe what our so next time you know in a, in a month's time look at how the month's gone in a sense yeah. and you know what do we think we've actually had to change because of menopause yeah is there anything and do you know what my i wonder what my prediction would be I'm wondering what I would, I think my rest and recovery has, has definitely been something that's changed. Yeah, mine too. Actually. Yeah, we can talk about that. My mate's just come <laughs> on and said stop swearing. Yeah, I, just, I was just going to, uh, is this the theme? Do you get told to stop swearing often? No, not by her. She's a potty mouth. Claire, Claire, I'm gonna name name check her. She's an absolute potty mouth. We should get her on as well. Like she'd love to join the live and like she like zero qualifications, but she would <laughs> be she'll happily talk about no. <laughs> her symptoms. <laughs> right. So shall we wrap up? Yes, let's do that. And hopefully people will have a little listen and a share. Yeah. And uh, let us know what they Think the music. I'm in. Uh, that's it. Yeah. That's it. So, um, 
so we'll release this as a podcast and we will i'm sure we'll both be posting about our uh, little fat loss phase because it, actually i was going to say one of my biggest challenges is i i i love accountability and i love feeling like i'm i i thrive when i'm doing things for other people or other things yeah so absolutely i i will happily post if you don't see a post from me you need to kick me up the arms yeah same thing yeah good ditto okay well thank you love it's been um, wonderful talking to you yet again and you and you and i'll speak to you later i'm quite yeah. sure you'll get a rambling rambling voice note from me tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> will you remember the words this time <laughs> <laughs> take care darling bye see you later bye